Good afternoon, Scott Redley, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. So we came in today a little bit surprised by the, uh, the size of the gap up today, considering that the G7 really didn't come out with much. You didn't get what the ECB or what people wanted from the ECB, but I guess the framework for a plan or, or whatever the forces that B wanted, you know, we were somewhat ready or in, in, the, in the process of trying to put in uh, some type of oversold bounce, and it wound up going probably further than people who were even long expected. And who knows, you know, when you, when you get involved with the right type of trade, sometimes you're allowed to be pleasantly surprised. You know, we talked about stocks that are acting strong, that are showing leadership, that are more than just a trade, and some that have been so bad at bruised that if you got involved with them correctly, you, you actually could make cash flow, and then you just gotta make sure you get out of them when the time is right. So let's just quickly run through a lot of things. Let's first go with the chart of the spiders. If you look here at the chart of the spiders, um, we made it right to a, a really big resistance area, even, even higher actually than I would have thought. You know, this was the, the, the old pattern, the head and shoulders top, met the measured move, and then you, know, you had this, remember the, the bear flag that we were talking about that wound up giving you more follow through to the downside. And then you know, into this 200 day moving average, we figured we'd have that 200 day moving average dance, and that's what took place, but, and then some. You know, if, if you look here, this was the first outside type day where you know, it traded below, closed sort of strong. Not extreme, not like something that people would have said is a massive, massive hammer. Um, but you know, that was what I think IBD put as day one of an attempted rally because it made a new low and then closed above the prior low. And then yesterday, you had a, a, you know, some follow through. We took back the 200 day. So you know, if, if you were short after seeing a huge move from you know, 142 in the spiders all the way down here, probably a good spot to cover. You know, even if you did think we were going to 125 or, or 1200, you know, it's, you know, markets trade. So, so PS, um, here you go. It traded above the prior high of 128.74, closed strong, spot to cover, spot to go out some, you know, go out a little bit long. And then, you know, today was a, a big day. Um, you know, the, the level that we put out there, which was uh, 134.40 to 134.60, if you look here, that was, you know, right around here. Okay, and a lot of guys on the Twitter sphere were asking me, you know, are you getting short? Are you getting short into this area? Because that's actually the spot that, that we paused at, you know, good spot to sell. That was right here. Um, after, you know, so here's your gap up. Um, here, if you weren't long, you actually had a little bit of time to, to, to see it hold, see the commitment to it, and you could have made money once it crossed above this. You could have been a buyer or at least covered even above 130.24. And then look at the move that you could have seen, even if you weren't involved in the overnight. You had probably about 20 minutes to make some decisions here, and you could actually even see it. You know, you could see it a little bit more thoroughly on, on your on your two-minute chart here, where you know here is your gap up, bull flag didn't fill the, the the gap, held the shorts captive, and then once it triggered above this area, 130.20, that was your entry. So you actually had entries that you could have made money with. So PS, you know, it went into the, the other resistance zone that we talked about, which was a good spot to sell some longs. If you're uncommitted, you know, most guys sold their longs, but a lot of guys like, are you going to get short in this area? And, you know, when you, when you start the day, what you do is you, you put some plans in place. Okay, if you come to me, um, you know, we, we talked about where we could go on an easy bounce and where it can go to probably start testing shorts. But we got to that level so fast that I was like, you know what, there's that much pent up energy to the long side, why don't we just back off a little bit and try it at a higher level, you know, which could be uh, 132.60 to 132.80. So I was trying to answer questions all day long saying I'm not quite ready. I did do a little bit after hours or 130, you know, 132.05, but if you go to the daily chart, you know, it basically was so strong that I said, you know, I'm going to give it a little bit of time because if I start shorting here and I play the roll-up game after the huge move we've had to the downside, I'm not such a committed bear. I'm just trying to trade the action. And right now, you know, this was a, a strong enough day that closed in the highs that you could see 132.62. No reason why, we, you know, you can't see this area considering um, the size of the move that we had here. And then, you know, then you have a real, real, real big uh, resistance all the way up here at 134 and change, which was that prior pivot, which is right here. So right now, if you were short, you're definitely sweating, especially if you're short from down here. Um, into this area, 
uh, I do think that uh, you'll start seeing the beads start dripping off of foreheads if they're rolling it up. And then right around here is where you're going to see if, uh, if the market or the bears don't contain the bounce here, uh, they're going to be running for the hills. So if you go to the chart of the SPX, you could also see um, a, a, a type of pattern here that I think is developing that I'd like to, you know, kind of isolate for you. You could see that we traded through this resistance right there that we were talking about. Um, the SPX actually had a, a little bit of a different type move. Um, you know, you could see actually the day one, the doji or the, or the, or the tail uh, type reversal, which was right here. So if you go here and you look, you will see like here is your, your tail. You know, it, so you saw that the sellers lost some momentum. Then here we held higher across there. And now if you want to draw like a descending trend line here, you know, there you go from, from this high. And then you can almost come in like this. So we all know that descending uh, channels tend to break to the upside. Okay, when they start a new trend, because you have a high, lower high, lower high. Question is, will we get a lower high into 1320? You don't know. So a lot of people are saying, what well, would tell you that this rally is for real? Um, because I was definitely getting um, a little bit more thorough as far as reading the headlines of all the problems out there. And I was like, you know what? The technicals are matching up with the, the headlines. Let's get out of the way. Um, but anyway, what you want to see is digestion over the next few days. You want to see the market hold a nice part of, of today's move. You know, typically like 50% of the top third. So if you go back to this chart and you see the market just say hold this top end, you see us hold above, you know, 1307-ish or 1305-ish, go sideways, then perhaps um, you know, we break this area and close above it, and then that could start a new move to you know, this, which is uh, you know, the prior resistance, which comes in right around uh, 1334. And then obviously there's a lot of trades along the way. So you know, it's no time for, for real <laughs> opinions here. But at this particular point, you could see this way where you had this head and shoulders top pattern lead to a calculated move to the downside, small little reversal that's led to an oversold bounce. Now the question is, do you see some commitment here or do we just start falling off to the wayside? So that's what I'll be looking at and I'll also be looking at some of the leaders. So if you go to some of the leaders, Apple acted well today, but it was pretty lethargic. It went quick. You could have bought like 368s, but then didn't give you a second move. If you look here on Apple, um, you will see that this stock is probably is one of the best high beta names. This is when we were really focusing on it at the 100 day. Had a quick move up before coming in. This was that reversal day. Remember the two-way action through 560.52. Traded lower, closed up. And then today, I think it just let the market play a little catch up. So I wouldn't say it's lagging. It's still above the 100 day. Um, but in order for this to start getting, I guess, frisky, so to speak, um, you're going to need to see really it break above this 580 and start showing some power. If that's the case, you, you probably start seeing some more conviction here. And if you look, I, I guess you, it's, this is really the, the downtrend. These things aren't perfect. This is when it broke right here. But it's, it's definitely holding higher. It was definitely a bit lethargic today. We'll see how we open. We know yesterday's or today's high of uh, 573.85, and we'll see. I really did not trade this today. Um, I came in with some longs. You know, I wasn't expecting the big gap up. I, I was pretty quick to sell my longs because I wasn't sure to trust it. And I, and I just kind of stayed away besides other tactical plays that I'll go over. So Apple looks like it's in the game in high beta tech. Amazon also, you know, looking pretty good. Um, you know, this was that big reversal that we saw, what was this, on Monday when it traded below, recaptured the 50-day, and it's coming back up going to retest this 220 area. It'll be interesting to see if it could bust through, if it could bust through, maybe some more conviction to the long side. Um, Baidu is still nowhere. Um, Baidu um, just came into this trend line that I drew saying, okay, there's a difference between an oversold bounce and a leader. Here you had this reversal for Monday. So who cares whether it's a leader or not? If you're a, a tactical trader, you had a nice three-day trade right into resistance. So some people that bought it on this day, um, you know, congratulations if you sold it into resistance. And now here, I would say you'd want to see it, you know, go sideways and hold in there for what could then be a, a better move. And we'll see if we get those type of moves. But right now, nice three-day trade. Google still doesn't act well, still lethargic, hasn't been the same, you know, this year because of two misses on earnings, one miss, 
Here was when it, it didn't really miss, but they, they treated it like a mist and then it broke the 200 day. So that was the signal to get out of the way. So it's, it's trying to hold this other support, this other point of reference that, we, that we've targeted a 560. So it's not showing leadership. It's not the Google of the past. You know, for this, I guess there's a little room to come back up to this moving average. Something needs to change here before anyone gets excited about this. As far as some of the mega cap names, different types of trades also. Sperling was talking about Microsoft yesterday at the 200 day. I think we spoke about it you know, in, in the morning call also. Microsoft gave you a nice move off the 200 day. And then we said you could add to it above this prior pivot. Nice trade. And now you have a descending channel here too. So we'll see if there's any move to the upside. Semis had two days. Look at Intel. You know, Intel not only had one day from the, you know, here this was a 200 day, it got another. So, you know, again, tactical. Buy things that, that make sense that you want on the 200 day and you could be okay. Look right here. This was that reversal. This is, if you sold here, based on the potency of this momentum failure, you know, if people said, oh, let's get involved in some at the 200 day. And if you did so, you had a clean move. Now the question is, can some of these break through these lower pivots? So that was, that was decent. Um, as far as what else in tech land, let's see what VMW did, some of the cloud names. Eh, you know, still difference between stock showing leadership, stock uh, acting well in, in a stock, you know, bouncing two days for, for cash flow. This has some resistance right here, and then it really has some bigger resistance into this zone. So we'll see what happens there. I, didn't, I haven't really been trading the, the cloud names at all. Um, a trade that did work for a day trade um, was Facebook. That was something that I at least thought to myself was a calculated play. Everyone's been battering it, bruising it, and it just did a normal strategic right dog reversal. It traded through yesterday's low of 25.75, you know, put a low in 25.55, came back above it, you buy there, stop at the low of the day, and then you, you know, trail it and intraday trade it. And for now, Facebook put one more little pivot low. Who knows if this one's gonna be it? You haven't seen two up days in Facebook since the IPO. I tried it here, made some good money, and it got negated, and I had to get out of it here. Here you go again. It traded through 25.75, traded back above it. Here is your buy, here's your stop. What is that, about 25 cents on a stock that's annihilated people, worth a try. And now we'll see if it could attempt again from a lower level to break a, a small little area to give you a, a bounce type trade, perhaps back to here. But for now, all it is is just a trade and, and, and it's a tier one, nothing more. Within that, you know, yesterday guys like, why'd you get involved with Zynga, that piece of trash? You know, sometimes uh, one man trash is another treasure. At the end of the day, thank goodness on the VTF, we have a lot of eyeballs. People are like, did you see that volume spike in Zynga? I looked at it, I'm like, wow, that's a nice size volume spike in Zynga. So bought it yesterday. If you look at Zynga, you will see, you know, not much to, to hang your hat on uh, <laughs> besides if you, took Zynga out of the question and saw this topping tail, you knew to get out of the way besides all the other you know, scenarios. But now you have a, a nice little two-day move into some resistance and it could see a little higher prices, but I wanna show you what you saw on you know, the intraday chart yesterday um, with the volume. Let's see if you see it here. You go to your five minute chart, <laughs> somebody around, this was actually, let's go even to um, the, I guess the three minute chart, you could see it. Someone right around, uh, 3.30-ish, okay, started to, to, to buy into the Zynga. I think this was, what, what, what bar was this? This was at, um, what is this, 3.57, decent size order right there, right? Or, or actually was that this morning? So, that there was definitely something, like maybe it was this volume spike that somebody pointed out, um, which happened to be at like, yeah, 3.54. So bought some, nice little move, PS, up like 6, 7% today, closed relatively strong, so all it was was just a trade in the life. One man's trash is another treasure if you could time it well. The casinos, a lot of guys were all over it yesterday, figured we can get at least a two-day trade. We got it, now the question is can you get more? LVS, um, nice little bottom formation, uh, you know, right here. This was uh, the, the, just like the market, your little reversal. You had some strength yesterday and then you had a little follow through into resistance we talked about 46 to 46.50 went to 47 now we'll see if it's worth staying with when we talked about what 102 to 105 you know look at what wind did nice three-day trade here's your red dog reversal if you bought which i actually bought and got away from you know 96.52 that's the low so on this day you what you did is you bought 96.52 at the low at 95.82 at 70 cents 70 cent risk 
And if you trailed it, <laughs> you were able to make, I don't know, what, what was this price if you bought it? 96.52, so just say even 97, 97 to 103, that's $6 calculated in win. And now it's up at resistance, so not a bad you know, spot to sell some. If it goes sideways, maybe we get another trade. So, you know, targeted, strategic, tactical. Yesterday, JP Morgan talked about a morning call. I'm like, it's down 30 cents, it's into some major resistance. They could rally the market if they buy the news because of the $4.2 billion loss. And then what will, if it can't go down on that, it's gonna show it's priced in. And JP Morgan wound up being a really nice two-day trade. Here was day one, you took some long. Here was your day two, filled the gap. And now, who knows, maybe it goes sideways and, and continues to this area. But all in all, from here to here, you know, you, you, you could have tried it here and got out when it, when it broke below 35.76. You probably tried it again here, got out on this day, and then you tried it here and now you made some money. And if you're an investor, you know, hopefully this is the bottom for you. Hopefully this is what held, which was 30.42 where it was pre-market yesterday, and, and it may not ever see 28. Right now you don't have to know that yet, but you don't have to be all in either. You know, Morgan Stanley had a nice move today. Um, some of the other banks had a nice move. Um, the OAHs and some of the oil names, you know, participated. But again, much different between something near highs versus something, you know, with the reversal coming into resistance for cash flow. We talked about retail. A lot different between Under Armour, if you're an investor looking to trade for a full-fledged breakout versus buying, you know, a bounce in, in, in Tiffany for this little three-day move, you know, within retail. You know, Target looks good. Um, looks like it, with a little bit more time, it could break out higher. Lulu's got earnings tomorrow. We'll see what happens there. We don't take stocks into earnings typically. So, oh, and lastly, gold. <laughs> gold, I was pleasantly surprised this morning because I had a pretty big position in gold. Gold ignited on Friday. Um, I actually was trading it for like a lack of faith in currency trade, not go up with the futures trade. But anyway, um, all in all, it gapped up. Um, sold some because I always sell 50 to 60% pre-market because I like to take the mark and then figure out what the composure is. It held firm all day. And then I got stopped out of my remainder. If you, if you look at the chart, it still looks okay. Actually, no, it doesn't. <laughs> you, know, it, uh, it, it, you know, it failed at the breakout area. That's why I said in, on the Twitter sphere, I'm like, if it doesn't hold 158.31 or 158, I'm going to get out of the way. I guess you can say it did hold uh, this support from the prior few days, but I got along in here, stayed with it because of the participation, and then today really shouldn't have happened. You know, I guess you could say you have a you know, downtrend here that it, that it kind of failed at, this intermediate downtrend, couldn't even get up to test there. So if you look at the five minute chart, I'll tell you what I did see though, why I got out of it, sold something to here, and then I said, you know, I'm gonna trail some as long as it holds 158.30. Look, look at this move, okay, <laughs> pow. Look at the potency of these two bars, one, two. That scared me, that shouldn't have happened. Okay, so then I said, I'm gonna put a stop below this low, because it tried to bounce off it. The low here was, what, 158.21? So once it broke the low of this day, after this two bar pwn down move, um, coming into the gap, I said, I am done with gold. I made some money, should have made more, should have acted better. Who knows, maybe it acts better in the future, but I got out right here, so I saved myself a, a really nice move lower. Then at the end of the day, you know, it bounced up a little bit, but you know, that was my tactical way out of it based on my own you know, uh, strategic uh, scenarios in place. So with that said, a lot went on today. Uh, the world's not solved. Uh, this is the midst of an of a oversold type bounce. We're already at resistance too. It happened quick. If you were long, congratulations. If you didn't cover your shorts at 12.70 and change, you probably stood around too long and you have some big decisions to make. If you shorted on the close today to, to hedge versus some of your longs, probably makes sense. If, if you're holding six, seven, eight, nine longs, having some spiders short at the end of the day just in case we open down is definitely prudent. You know, if you went net short on the close because of the size of the day, just realize that you know, we, we can trade a, a bit higher. We went out pretty strong. You, know, we, we, you can see this area so just know that, that that could happen. And and just realize that it's the first week of June. We have a lot of summer left. Um, you don't have to know whether uh, Monday was the low of the market in order to make money. Um, you just have to know levels in the market, what's the trade you're looking for, your time horizon, and, and judge the action moving forward. I do think that um, a little bit higher, it'll be key to look to see if the rally fails. We'll watch the leaders, we'll see what goes on. And just don't get sucked in, you know, 
uh, where you short the bottom and you buy after a big move. Just be more strategic. That's what we're trying to teach you. Scott Relative, T3 Live, the recap. See you at the morning call. Have a good night.